Hi, and welcome to Restaurant Review. I'm your host, Bob Bockelman. Pardon me for this horrible cold, but uh, I'll do my best today. As you know, we are here every week bringing you some of New Orleans' uh, finest new restaurant chefs and musicians around our city. That's our goal, and uh, we're sticking to it. Uh, uh, we also uh, want to let you know that uh, we are moving, we hope, into Jefferson Parish on Channel 8. So if you have a chance, check it out. I know it's in the evenings. We haven't gotten a full scale uh, schedule yet, but uh, it will be great news for our Jeffersonian residents, our next door neighbors. Uh, we also want to tell you today, we don't have an in-studio musician. Uh, we do have one archival tape, so we always bring you fine music, even if it's not live in here. But we do have a brand new restaurant and this chef, and I know you're gonna, we're real anxious for you to meet them. So why don't we do this? Why don't we, uh, we'll skip our stroll to the back of the studio, but we're going to go ahead and switch to the tape. And let's see what Bob, who Bob has to uh, bring you all. I think it's uh, Category 5, Camille Alba, her husband, and another gentleman. Let's see if that's who we have on store for you today. Let's take it away, musicians. more that I can 
Welcome back. Uh, it was a lovely song, and they'll be, that group will be back with us for two more songs. But uh, we really appreciate you coming to us. As we mentioned, uh, we're a restaurant review, and today we have a beautiful new restaurant uh, on our west bank of our Mississippi River in our adjoining parish, Jefferson Parish. As we mentioned years ago, for those natives, they knew that. Uh, the West Bank back in the 80s was a thriving restaurant community, just like here on the East Bank. There were at least four or five five-star restaurants on there. Uh, and unfortunately, after the nasty oil bust that we had here in our city, uh, we lost a lot of those. And it's been slow to bring uh, the West Bank back to its restaurant community. It's done a lot of uh, fast food stuff and a lot of little stuff, but nothing really good. We've been pleased to show you over the last two years of our three-year show that it's coming back. And more and more of the uh, restaurants, some of the very same four-star restaurants are being converted, like last year, Clementine's Belgian Bistro we had on had taken over from a previous one. It was a very, very famous restaurant back in the 80s. So we're really all glad uh, that the West Bank is coming back into its own, and we're hoping our East Bank residents like myself will verge over there and give some of these residents, restaurants a try. We're really glad for the residents of the West Bank that they now have some place to go instead of having to always travel to the East Bank. And today we really have a premier restaurant and chef. And we want to tell you uh, right away its name, if you can see that, it's called The Garden Room. And we're pleased to have with us, representing The Garden Room, the executive chef, Mr. Bob Pierce. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Great. Well, Bob, tell us a little bit how long the restaurant's been open, and then let's talk a little bit about your background and how you got into the uh, culinary field. So we've been in business at the restaurant for about um, a year and a half now. We, uh, the, the facility has been there, He's been in business for about 25 years, the Guidry family. Um, uh, we serve uh, lunch and Monday through Friday. We started out originally just Tuesday through Friday, but we found that everybody was asking us for, uh, uh, to open up on Monday so they'd have a good place to eat. So we began opening uh, Monday through Friday and uh, the business is doing really well. Um, I've been in the business now for over 15 years. Uh, I worked for Chef Emeril uh, Lagasse for seven years at NOLA and... Uh, beautiful restaurant. Yeah. I guess NOLA before. was beautiful before but Chef Lagasse came and he just added his, his name to it. So it's always been one of my favorite restaurants. <laughs> and anything else, didn't mean to cut you off That's there, okay. but I just wanted to add some emphasis to it. We, um, I got some excellent experience working under a couple of great chefs, Neil Swidler and David ah, McKelvey. Great, uh, great. Christian Zawanka, and they, they really brought me along and gave me some good ideas and some good experience. Um, and I've worked uh, outside of the Louisiana, uh, Florida, and I know that I needed to come back to uh, New Orleans for good food. Uh, the restaurant um, here on the West Bank, we wanted to open up a great place. The uh, house was the, the original place was converted into a catering facility um, about 78 79 and uh, it's been doing really well the Guidry family I see it AG Guidry and Dolores Guidry who started off in their uh, garage baking cakes and moved to another little small company a little uh, building and then bought this house and converted it into a catering facility and uh, added on the ballroom and then they turned it over to their son Glenn and he uh, they had a patio and he turned it into what's called a garden room is what we serve lunch out of now yes yeah, really nice this is a, a lovely lovely site in fact you're seeing some of the uh, interiors of the restaurant as you enter the home under a beautiful oak tree and a lovely uh, circle uh, entrance 
Uh, you enter through a Victorian living room parlor. Really pretty, pretty place. And then also, as you take a few steps down, and this is basically like their solarium or their uh, garden room. It's actually one whole wall of the uh, restaurant is nothing but French doors out looking a, a beautiful patio courtyard and done tastefully all in white. And we've got some Victorian flowers for you today to represent how pretty it is from our, our Grow With Us florists as they always underwrite. So it really is a beautiful setting. And again, a lot of the restaurants in West Bank really are suffering maybe from, from the look as well as the, uh, the taste. Here we've got both of it together, so we really are pleased that we're getting fine dining back into the, into the West Bank. We've got a great, great chef, as I mentioned to you, his credentials are, are outstanding, putting it in a beautiful setting, and we can't wait to show you some of the great, great food. Now he mentioned they're only, and this is my only complaint to them, is they're only open for lunch. Uh, so the problem is, once people get addicted to this restaurant, I know a lot would like to be going maybe on a Friday night out to eat and stuff like that. So maybe down the road they'll, they'll reconsider and, and add that dining. Although I know he's got the chef's dream of a job, but I only have to work during the day hours. So we don't want to ruin it for them. Uh, tell us a little bit about the size of the restaurant. How many do you seat, please? We seat up to about 100 people Great. at a time. Great. Uh, and uh, it, it allows us to... Uh, take care of them really well. We have a good wait staff. Okay. And, uh, Great. Well, let's go ahead without further ado, because the people are here, they want to see the food uh, and help you describe it to them as best we can. So as we always do, we start with our appetizers. We take a look at two or three of them. And we really got a great looking one for you. First, folks, it's uh, uh, one of his prize dishes. It's called Shrimp Amanda. Tell us about it, please. Beautiful, beautiful shrimp here. Sure. This is a... Um a New Orleans style uh, barbecue shrimp. I say that because it lets everybody know that the uh, shells are still on uh, the shrimp. Uh, it kind of came by, well, one of our uh, office managers was baking some shrimp with some uh, uh, butter and Italian seasonings and garlic and she was questioning me how to do it and I said just do it how you want to and uh, she baked it and man it tastes so good. I said I've got to put that on the menu. We um, just saute that real slowly in a little butter and some garlic and served with some uh, dipping bread there, as you see. It's very, very good. really is. Uh, of course, a lot of people are going to compare it to the uh, New Orleans' own barbecue shrimp, but it may, might not have the pepper level, but what I find was really great was the garlic level. And I know if you don't have like pepper, you certainly like garlic in New Orleans. And they're beautiful slices of cooked garlic. And I really liked it without the seasoning. Of that. And, uh, you can do anything you want to doctor it up. But at the same time, it's very pure, pristine, beautiful sized shrimp, lovely count, nice, nice sauce, and of course, the fabulous dipping bread. All right, let's take a look at our second one, and I believe the next one is the uh, stuffed mushrooms. I think these are magnificent. I even I told Bob, well, we, we can't just show them covered up with the sauce because uh, we really don't see the ingredients. We had to open one up for you. And let's take a look and tell us all about this presentation. Sure. We... Uh bread our stuffed mushrooms that's actually stuffed with uh, our crab meat dressing which you, we use a uh, lump crab meat and we also use the claw crab meat in there just for the flavor um, we take our traditional trinity vegetables and saute that and add our um, our own bread crumbs and tighten that up fit that into a nice button mushroom medium size and uh, dredge that a little italian bread crumbs and, and deep fry it and we put it over uh, with some hollandaise uh, Nice lemony hollandaise. Uh, yeah. It's very, very good. And the hollandaise was excellent. It was light. Nowadays, hollandaise sauces, a lot of things have, have taken the name and will uh, actually uh, expand on it. Uh, a lot of hollandaise sauces today are very, very heavy. Uh, maybe mayonnaise. I don't know what it is they're using, but I've gotten away totally from it. So I, I was really pleased to taste. This is back to the original states, the lightness of the hollandaise. So it's not really weighing you down or weighing whatever it's on down. Really a lovely, lovely uh, appetizer. So Andy, you notice you saw four. Is that your normal serving or did you just pad it for the pictures? No, that's our normal serving. serving. So that would be a great thing for you and your diner because it uh, be a lovely thing to share with your diners at the table. Now lastly, and, and it's not lastly of his appetizer, but lastly the one we picked, it's one that used to be years ago unknown to the community. Now it's um, everyday fare, so it's expected at every restaurant, but he does an admirable job of it. So tell us about your spinach and artichoke dip. Sure, we take our uh, spinach and artichoke dip and uh, 
saute uh, artichokes and onions and garlic and uh, spinach. Mix that in with cream cheese and uh, some Parmesan and slow simmer that. Uh, we'll put that into a nice rarebit dish. Um, toast that off in the oven with some uh, fresh Parmesan grated on top of that and it's served with our homemade toastettes. Um, very savory. I like it a lot. Uh, you can do so many things with this little dish but uh, that's one of our favorites, one of our family favorites. They always want a little portion of yeah. it when they come in. Right. I, I can understand why. Definitely it's going to be a family favorite. Uh, I like the addition of the extra cheese on top. Um, the only thing I've gotten uh, to, to like this, because it's gotten so common, I, I like it at a little spicier level, but that's, the only, that's only a personal preference. It's really magnificent with regard to the fresh cheese on top. And again, something very large. So not for the single diner because it's much too filling. It's certainly you're going to have se several people at your table. Now let's go ahead and move forward. We want to move into our soups and salads and got a remarkable line of salads, which is great for all, not only all you ladies out there, but all of us who are health conscious at lunchtime. This one is my favorite, the combination of a salad, a Caesar salad, and bringing in sushi. Uh, for those who don't freak out, for those who know today, tuna tataki or uh, tataki that's basically rare in the middle and seared on the outside is being served everywhere, not just on sushi bars. It's, it's in our finest steakhouses. It's used at middle class restaurants. And here, Bob has done a beautiful job on a salad that you really can't be, uh, uh, get a better taste. Let's see, why don't you describe it? Hopefully we'll get that picture up for you. Sure, we do uh, a nice Caesar dressing on romaine lettuce and we take our tuna and we simply marinate them in our own seasoning. Uh, then my, uh, my assistant uh, does a great job, Chris, um, dips that in a little uh, butter and oil combination and then he uh, drops that on the grill and sears it off real uh, um, nice on the outside with uh, uh, some charred flavoring on there. Uh, the great thing about it is, is you can order it to any way you want it, medium rare, rare, uh, medium. Um, it really, whatever you prefer to have, that's what we'll give them. Um, I like it rare like that. Of course. And for the people who eat sushi, this is the way to do it. But at the same time, as he mentioned, just like people who have to have their burgers or their steaks, they don't want any red on the inside. You know, you, you at a fine dining restaurant, they're going to be you're the you're the king, so they're going to follow your instructions. But for those who don't, the people who are uh, contemporary taste, you're not going to find a better salad. It's very very refreshing and truly a delight to look at. Now let's look at another one that really is uh, one that's a mixture of the old time and the fried foods, but much lighter than it as well. And that's your oyster remoulade salad. This is really we're used to having shrimp remoulade, but this is a great twist on it. And let's see if we can get, describe it for us, Bob. Uh, sure. Uh, this kind of birthed out of a, a function that we did uh, last year um, with uh, remoulade uh, dressing. Uh -huh. It's uh, horseradish and uh, vegetables, onions, uh, um, mayonnaise based, very seasoning uh, dish here. We take our fresh Louisiana oysters and deep fry those. And I know you like those grilled. Oh, yeah. uh, when he came <laughs> and he asked for them grilled. But you can have them any way you want. I think that the, our remoulade sauce that we have uh, goes so well with the different uh, dishes. We serve it with our tuna uh, steak entree. But the remoulade there goes well with the fried oysters. And it comes on a mixture of uh, a sweet greens, a uh, mescaline mix with uh, carrots and cucumbers and fresh sliced tomatoes. Um, it's a nice, generous portion of oysters. Uh, and then the, the, or the uh, remoulade drizzled on top of that. It comes out to be a very good salad, very popular. We have several people that's what they come in for. That's the only thing they get uh, when they come in. I try to encourage them to get other things, but uh, uh, that's what they like to well, have. Well, that's the key. Once you find something good, most people want to stick to it. And even though he mentioned my first visit, I did ask for it grilled and loved it grilled. But the other night when we were taking the pictures, I certainly tried it when it's fried and it was equally as good. So I was very impressed. It wasn't too heavy. And that's my concern about fried food is sometimes it's just over battered and uh, just too heavy for me. But here, just the opposite, very light. And he said a tremendous part. I was expecting to see three or four at the most oysters. It was just loaded with oysters. So I can certainly understand where this can be more than a meal for someone. So where they might not be able to order anything else. Because even though it's light being a salad, <coughs> Those oysters really fill you up, especially when you have that many. Okay, now let's talk about soups. It's one of my favorite, and uh, we're, we're calling it a one-one-one. Even though he's not serving it like this, we did it for the picture. 
by showing uh, some of his gumbos as well as his uh, bis. Let's go ahead and see. We'll start with the uh, traditional. Let's start at the, uh, the 12 o'clock and tell us about that bisque up at the top. That's our uh, crawfish and corn bisque or chowder. Uh, it's kind of a funny story about uh, me serving this. Is we, uh, when I was a chef in Florida, when I would serve this dish, people from Louisiana just come out of the woodworks for this. But it, we start off with it. It's an excellent uh, Louisiana crawfish tails. I'll only use Louisiana uh, products uh, when I can. Uh, and uh, fresh corn, and that's simmered down with uh, uh, cream. Uh, very tasty, very good. Uh, also, um, we serve that with a little pinch of parsley on top. Yeah, right. That's because people, people don't realize parsley is not just a decoration. Right. I learned, learned years ago that parsley has such good, uh, uh, especially, well, I, I like the, the, the leaf parsley rather than the escarole stuff, but uh, it's good for you. It's a breath mint, which right. most people don't know. It's a wonderful digestion. Uh, aid to digestion, so it'd be so, and it's got two other things besides being colorful and being a thing. But most people will take that out, and they don't realize how much it adds. That and like a mint adds uh, wonderful flavors to a dish. So I agree, uh, it's beautifully presented, but also it tasted excellent to have the parsley, uh, yeah, sprig of parsley in the uh, bisque. All right, let's move down the uh, around the table of the plate at least. Uh, in our bottom right corner, we get a picture up. It was going to be which gumbo? That's your chicken gumbo. Chicken gumbo. Tell us about that beautiful gumbo. Right. Uh, that's one of the Gidry uh, favorites. They love that chicken gumbo. It's uh, well, that's definitely Cajun. Yeah. They, uh, they take uh, uh, your vegetables, your celery, onion, and bell pepper, and, and sweat that down, and it goes in with a nice chicken broth, uh, slow cooked with a very good dark roux, um, with some good uh, smoked sausage. And uh, we use chicken thigh meat in there because the chicken thigh meat gives it so much better flavor uh, than just your traditional white. Right, yeah, you're right. Uh, and it uh, slow cooked that, and it's real important. We had to, our thigh meat we add at the end because you can't stand the stringiness of the chicken after Correct. it cooks too Correct. long. Correct. Uh, that's one of the signs you can tell it's been there too long. <laughs> it's because the chicken is just stringy. Laying up all over um, there, yeah. And uh, it's not too spicy. That's one right. thing that people are concerned about. It's not spicy, but it's very rich, very flavorful. And uh, one of our favorites. People really enjoy that gumbo. Okay. And last but not least, the seafood gumbo at the other end of the plate. Another great one. Well, that's, uh, people come up, one of the biggest comments they say, that, that roux that's in there is just like grandma makes. <laughs> and when some people start talking about grandma's gumbo, you know you've done a good job. Uh, we do our best to chalk that full of shrimp and crab meat, uh, a lot of seasonings. Uh, it's another thing that's not too spicy. Uh, it has some black pepper in it, but it's not a spicy red pepper uh, f flavor to it. And uh, one of our favorites, uh, people, like I said, really refer that as uh, grandma's type of uh, dark roux and gravy. They enjoy that a lot. Uh, we do serve that uh, with different dishes. We have our, um, a bowl of that, or you can get a cup, and it comes with you know, a smaller a portion with uh, po' boys. However you like to eat it, it's good. It's not too heavy. Uh, one of our favorites. Excellent, folks. I tell you, whether you choose, uh, in fact, I would hope he would start serving these in one, one, one little small demi tasse cups because I think it's great. It's a great treat now that winter's coming. But at the same time, individually, any of them, whether you get a cup of bowl, are really good. And, and like as he mentioned, uh, it's not too hot. So if you want to jack it up, he certainly will give you the ingredients to do so. Folks, we're talking, and I, and I really feel bad because we. We went right into it, but we are talking to the executive chef, Bob Pierce, of the Garden Room. And we really didn't mention, we just said it was on the West Bank. It is uh, on, um, well, I don't know the actual street name, but i tell you the best thing to do. If you know the West Bank Expressway, if you take the Manhattan exit, you go one block and you can't miss it. It's a beautiful, imposing structure right there on your left at that intersection. If you've ever been down to the school board, the school board is uh, about a block down further on your right. But it's a beautiful home. It's situated among this beautiful, large old oak tree and really, really lovely. So I apologize for not saying where it was located. So right off of Manhattan, just take a straight block, one block to the first intersection and there on your left, drive in. You can have uh, there won't be valet parking, but there's a lovely little entrance you can let someone out, and there's a wonderful adjacent parking lot right at the edge of the building. Okay, and then we mentioned they're only open for lunch. We also failed to tell you that 
Don't hesitate to call in. I'm surprised someone hadn't called in and, and caught my plight of not even saying where the restaurant is. But our numbers, the director is putting up on, on the uh, TV for you all the time, 483-3336 and 3338. Give us a call. Ask Bob or myself any questions about the show or about this great new restaurant. Now, we want to move forward and actually hit some of the entrees because we really want to show you what uh, all of this great background has brought to the table. And the first one is one that he doesn't have on the menu yet, but he tells me it's going to be a staple. And I, I could concur. I'm really glad. It's got a lot of alliteration in it, so uh, pardon me on this, but it's ruby, re ruby red rainbow trout. And tell us what you do with this beautiful piece of fish. Great. That's our... Uh I just started bringing that in in the last week or so. Uh, this is an excellent uh, portion of ruby red rainbow trout. Uh, we serve it two different ways. I'll either do it with a nice cornmeal crust or just a bronzed as a nice culinary term that we've heard so much here lately uh, on the grill with plenty of seasoning. Makes it nice and brown. Has an excellent uh, color. Gives great flavor to it. Uh, and then I'll take some nice uh, new potatoes and I boil that and season that up really well and then uh, uh, lightly toss that with some butter, and seasonings and uh, parsley. And then right out of our own little patio garden, I I've, I've, uh, pick some fresh tarragon uh, and I, I slow simmer that down a little white wine and uh, add and make an aioli out of that which is just your, your mayonnaise really with a garlic flavor to it, you know, if you're really going to get technical. Um, and uh, I fold that into the, the mayonnaise and dribble, drizzle that over the uh, fish. It adds a nice flavor to the grilled fish as well as the potatoes that goes along with that. It's not too heavy. It's a, the ruby red looks like a salmon, but it tastes nothing like it. Um, and uh, it's not very... Uh, strong and flavor like a salmon. It's nice and light. It took, my, it took the words right out of my mouth. I think I mentioned to you that the first look certainly gives you that aura of salmon. It's a beautiful piece of, of fish, uh, a beautiful steak of fish. I like to say the colors of the uh, seasonings bring it to that beautiful lushness of that salmon color, which is so rich in its taste, in its viewing and look. But once again, once you bite into it, you've got a much lighter fish. You've got that trout, which is much, much lighter. So it really is delightful. I, I, had, I always eat it in three steps because the first step is to taste the fish or the main entree. Then I, then I took uh, some, of, some of it with the potatoes, which was a great, almost like a, not a German potato salad, but a German, like a potato salad that's cold but without the mayonnaise. And then the third piece is actually incorporating the mayonnaise or the tarragon aioli. So whether you ate it individually or the way he serves it, all of them are extreme uh, taste to your uh, palate. I think you'll find it very, very good. And as you know, trout used to be, uh, speckled trout and all used to be a staple in New Orleans communities. It disappeared altogether. So for us to be able to get trout back again is a well, well, uh, thank you to this chef and his great treatment of it. So uh, hopefully it'll be printed on the menu next time you go there. If not, just ask for it because he said it is going to become a staple and I can see why. It's a great, great dish. Now, looking at another New Orleans fish that's so uh, popular, the catfish. And uh, what he's doing here is he's frying it like everybody wants, but more importantly, he's doing a beautiful job of stuffing it. So uh, let's see if we can take a look at this beautiful stuff and look at that lady. You would never know that that was a catfish. Tell us about it, please, uh, Chef. Sure. You know, one thing that I like to uh, uh, emphasize on is local or Louisiana products. And I wanted to make sure that this catfish was a Louisiana product and it comes from back home up in North Louisiana. I'm so happy about that. We do take this uh, fish and it is uh, grilled um, and stuffed with a nice crab meat dressing. Uh, very full. Uh, we, uh, it's actually two pieces of catfish there, uh, Bob, and ah. uh, stuffed in between the two is the crab meat dressing uh, with a nice lemon scented velouté uh, sauce on top. Uh, which is a, really a good f a fish stock and uh, with a lemon and just a hint of roux just to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, that's one of our, our most popular dishes that we have at the restaurant. It really overpowers many of the other entrees that we have. Uh, we're pleased to bring that along. The catering uses that dish constantly on their banquets and, and their buffets that they do all over uh, the city and even in the facility there. Well, I think it's a great tribute because 
so many people want fried catfish and I don't even eat it because it's just too commonplace. But you've brought it to a totally different level. And like I said, I knew it. I knew there couldn't be one fish the way you get it so <laughs> stuffed because it is triple layer. So I didn't ask about it, but I was, I was fairly sure we had more than one fish on that plate. But a wonderful, wonderful stuffing with the lovely, has another good look at it with the crab meat, but very, very light. And once again, the batter on, on the fish is not heavy, heavy, which to me uh, always takes away from the taste of whatever it's covering. So uh, for those who like catfish, this is a real, real treat. Now, a fine dining restaurant wouldn't be a fine dining restaurant without a steak. And, of course, we've got one here, a uh, petite filet, that he really does great justice for the steak lover in the community. Tell us about your filet, please, petite filet. Our petite filet there is uh, one thing that's real important to me is being hand cut. Uh, I clean those uh, steaks, the tenders myself, and cut them uh, usually the same day that uh, I, I serve them. Um, it's kind of a funny story. One of the... Uh, customers or guests as we like to call them came into the, the kitchen one day and asked me if I had any more fillets and I had one in my hand uh, getting ready to cut and he was pleased to see how fresh it was uh, being prepared just for him. Um, it, you know getting back to one of the other dishes the way I present my dishes or put them together I try to think about when I would be serving or how and I could just imagine myself with that trout bomb out fishing on the, one of the uh, creeks and uh, putting it together right there with the potatoes and I try to do the same thing with the steak you know, uh, giving it uh, an original idea, sitting on top of a little haystack of sweet potatoes, um, I grill that, at the, we do marinate those uh, steaks and uh, on our seasoning. Um, but one of the things that I like about it also is the homemade steak sauce that we make. Um, I call it a steak sauce, but it's really a butter-based uh, in Worcestershire uh, reduction. Uh, very flavorful. A lot of rich uh, going on, and then the nice green onion batons and crab meat in the back. Yeah, that's, I thought it was unusual to have the fried green onions, but it makes a great look and a great taste. And of course, embedded on that uh, on the bird's nest of uh, sweet potato fries, tremendous. And lump crab meat and steak, just this surf and turf, it's just really one of the best things you can really have. Now, so you won't think he's just got fish, two fish and uh, a steak on the menu. We don't have any more pictures of entrees, but let's talk about it. You've got to have a chicken dish, and I see that you do both grilled and fried chicken and also pork chops. Tell us about that because these, again, hearty foods that a lot of us love to eat and won't give up for any reason whether we move from the fried to the grill. Tell us, tell us what you do on those, please. One of the great ideas that I do with our pork chop, and uh, I do soak those pork chops in a uh, salt, and uh, brown sugar and rosemary brine, which gives it a great flavor. It tenderizes it, um, and it's don't be afraid of the salt aspect because it's not a salty uh, dish. Yeah, don't scare me. I, was, yeah. I got worried there right when you said it was <laughs> salt is your primary ingredient, but well, no. Well, uh, back that up. Then actually, the brown sugar is the primary yeah, ingredient, yeah. Uh, and it is a brine. The salt is there just to give it a bring out help some of the sugar come out in the dish. Um, I soak that in there. It helps tenderize the pork even more. It gives it a great flavor with that rosemary. Um, we do have people that ask for it without it, and I let them know really all of our pork chops are like that. Um, and they give it a try, and they come back and let me know it was an excellent choice. They had no problem with it. We grill that. We uh, serve it as a dish with any entree that you want. We serve it with our white beans on Thursdays and our red beans on, on Monday. Uh, you can have that fried or grilled. Uh, same thing with the chicken. Uh, we do a great uh, seven ounce chicken breast, which is really a big chicken breast for lunch. Uh, we grill that, uh, and that's marinated in our seasonings that we do. Um, we serve that on a salad. We serve it as an entree. We serve it as a po' boy. Just anything that you want, we can do uh, with that chicken. Well, you hit on two good things. While we, had, as you know, folks, we mainly feature the plater the plates and stuff like that. At the same time, even though it's a fine dining restaurant, it also is appealing to all classes. On the West Bank, it's got to draw in the other folk who might not know so much about or are used to a certain level of, so he's got, it's a lunchtime restaurant, so you have poor boys, as he mentioned, a full sl slate of those. But even more importantly, he's got a daily lunch special. Uh, some of them consistent and sometimes he varies. But let's go over day by day because you hit on one of white beans, which is my favorite. Let's go Monday through Friday and tell us what, what they give, they don't like anything off the regular menu, what they can always rely on as your, as your business lunch. All right, on Mondays, is, you know, you Gotta have be to it. have your, uh, your special uh, red beans and rice. You have to do that. If you don't have it, people in New Orleans get upset with you. And we serve that with catfish, smoked sausage, 
anything they really want. Uh, Tuesday, which is a, a big West Bank uh, thing, is hamburger steak. There you go. You have to have hamburger steak and mashed potatoes, and uh, the Gidry family love to serve that with this Creole sweet peas. Um, we also do the chicken stew, which is one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, I was about it's to say, really I, I'd, good. I'd have a toss up there because Creole chicken stew really sounds like something I would be leaning toward. And that, that chicken stew is uh, we slow simmer that and that once again we do use the thigh meat for the flavor it gives it a good rich flavor on Wednesday we do Glenn's uh, corned beef and cabbage we had to put that on there Glenn's father kept saying you need to put cabbage uh, corned beef and cabbage on there he kept referring to a place that always had it and had the best and we brought that along uh, Glenn likes to slow cook that in, a, in this pickling spice and wow. uh, we serve that with a good a uh, bit of corn, uh, cabbage, actually. Which is really great because, again, uh, New Orleans used to have a wonderful, still has a huge German community, but no, if none, restaurants to go to. And only on special occasions do they get a chance to eat German food. So, And that is a staple of German food, the uh, uh, corned beef and cabbage. So that's a great, he was right to certainly include it. And what else do you have? I know you have another one on that day as well. Wednesday we do a lasagna of the day. Uh, it's just whatever I feel like doing that, that day. And uh, we do anything from, I'll do chicken and mushroom to do a vegetarian style uh, with mushrooms and artichokes and spinach. Last week I did an Italian sausage. I've done crawfish and shrimp, just uh, whatever I feel like, you know. Neat, neat. It's That's really great. Good. So it's not always just either the plain lasagna or the vegetarian lasagna. So right. I, I think lasagna, right, should be treated just like any other pasta and, and can be incorporated with any other type of entree. So I think you, you've hit it right on the nose. It's a great idea. Now, Thursday, here we go, this is some, uh, which I love, and it's not usually on a Thursday at restaurants. Go ahead. White beans and rice. Uh, mm. I kind of bring in my North Louisiana uh, uh, soul food, as I like to call it, into it, and bring in uh, ha smoked ham shanks or ham hocks, whatever I have, a uh, nice thyme flavor. And we do that with also uh, with the rice and uh, pork chops or catfish um, on Friday. Uh, we do crawfish. Actually, right now we're doing the shrimp etouffee. Uh, uh, that we love to do. Well, that's Very great because you got your gumbo's already fixed on the menu, so it's really good to see you doing that etouffee, and crawfish and shrimp. Uh, you're doing a brown uh, roux. What are you doing on the sauce? The etouffee really, it's a it's a brown uh, oh. with the, the red hint. We do have some okay. tomato product in there. One thing I did leave out on there, Bob, on Thursday, uh, uh, my uh, sous chef Chris said I do a great shrimp stew. So wow. I gave him a try, and man, it, it's become a sta staple on Thursdays also. Excellent, shrimp stew. excellent. You know, our prices aren't too high. Uh, that's one thing that we try to target with these, uh, these uh, menu items here. Sure, sure. So folks, don't be frightened off. A lot of people, when we talk about fine dining, because of course, we bring to you out there all categories of restaurants other than fast food and uh, buffets and cafeterias. So we bring all levels, all price levels. The important thing here is we show how magnificent food dining is in New Orleans. So this restaurant has it for all, to lure you over to the West Bank or to you, lure you there for dinner. Fine dining, white tablecloth, beautiful thing, great service, wonderful taste, but you can have your poor boy, if that's what you want and used to at lunch, or you can have your businessman's lunch or your staple family lunch that everyone does with, with some, a great variety. So it's got a lot to offer. Remember, it's called the Garden Room. We're talking to executive chef Bob Pierce. What we're going to do now for you though is go back and let you bring from that archive that group and let's have them do another song and then we'll come back and finish up with, with Bob. So stay tuned and let's go ahead and hear what we got for our next song. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good.
Chifuncta River, beautifully done, huh? Okay, folks, well, we're back with uh, our restaurant today. It's called uh, The Garden Room. Uh, uh, Bob pointed out to me something that really we, we might be confusing, because, uh, again, as he mentioned, the Gidry family started many years ago. I'm working out of the same thing and still working out of this lovely home, and that's called La Maison Creole, the Creole house. And this is an extension of it, which has only been open in, uh, a year and a half. They've taken right off of the living room, uh, the garden room, and made it into the restaurant. So it's the garden room at Maison Creole. So whether you're going there to book a catering or a private party, or whether you're going there for lunch, you can call it either place and find the place. So for those natives or people in the West Bank who know Maison Creole, we're talking about the same place. One is the restaurant name, but it's all hooked together, so you won't get lost. And don't forget uh, to check for them for their catering. They'll do catering off, off site as well as there. I know when I was there yesterday, it was a great uh, group of ladies that I happened to have met at uh, WYS auction. They wear these red hats they call the ladies over 50 that wear red and purple or red hats. I don't know their name, but anyway, they, they got a good laugh and I knew who they were. So it's a national organization with local roots, and it was fun to see them having such a good time in, in, the, in their own private dining room. Okay, let's get back to our chef. We're, we're talking, as I mentioned, to Bob Pierce. We've gone through a lot of his entrees and appetizers. Hopefully, if that hasn't wowed you, we're now going to come to the desserts. And of course, after any good meal, if you've got room, well, you usually can make room for this. Most people have some form of sweet tooth. So, Bob, let's go ahead and look at our first dessert. And I know it was really one of my favorites because it's very hard to find a good, moist carrot cake. This is our, our carrot cake, and uh, we do serve a large portion. Uh, I know the picture is Monumental there in that big. picture, huh? Yes, it, it is. Uh, we take a, a, a great amount of uh, carrots and, and grind that up, or actually, you know, in small. Uh, cook that into uh, your traditional carrot cake recipe. Uh, very good, very moist. Uh, you know, we do add the, uh, the pineapple to it, which brings out a lot of sweetness, adds good moisture to it, with a nice sprinkling of cinnamon uh, powder all over around the plate to give it a nice accent to the carrot. Yeah, I think it was excellent. Again, the, my two problems with carrot cake, and the most obvious problem with most of the carrot cakes is either people don't sell enough of them, or for some reason, they're always dry. And they're dry, I, I'm not going to eat more than that first little taste. The other thing is too many people today are making so many different variations of the topping that it's almost getting nauseating. This is a simple cream, not heavy, not taking away from the true ingredients, which is the cake itself. So it's perfect, it's authentic, it's original, and I think you'll really like it. Now for us chocoholics, mm -hmm. got a double fudge chocolate cake. Watch out. Let's take a look at this one. This is one of our favorites. Uh, people really, uh, we sell these cakes individually as well, and this is really a favorite. Um, three layers of very rich, and, and you don't scare anybody off by calling it heavy chocolate no, you uh, don't. flavoring. Uh, with a nice chocolate buttercream uh, on the outside, but it's an excellent uh, chocolate pudding layers 
in the center. And we serve that with a nice drizzle of chocolate syrup. One of my favorites. I'm a chocolate hawk myself. Yeah, no. And uh, it's just really good with a nice cup of coffee. And once again, not only that, a sprig of that mint, that beautiful mint accompanying it. I'm telling you folks, it's nothing better. It taste that right after your last slice of cake. It's going to help you with the digestion, especially after eating all that you've done here. Now we'll do one more. Of course, New Orleans' favorite tradition. It's got to be a bread pudding, just like anything else. Here he's taking it, there he gives it to you regular with rum, but this is his special version. This is an additional consideration. Tell us about it, please. This is one of my uh, favorite things that, w that we do is uh, bread pudding, but on the menu I said add another dimension. And we take our, our traditional New Orleans style bread pudding and we deep fry that. Uh, and we serve that with uh, chocolate sauce and praline uh, liqueur and a nice rum sauce over the top of that. Uh, this kind of birthed one of my um, pastry chef friends who uh, has done different things like fried chocolate bread pudding and things like that and I, I wanted to try it out, uh, drop it down in the deep fryer one day. I said, we've got to serve this. This is great. Uh, started out as really kind of, not to say a joke, but a, a little side thing that I did with somebody and they said, you got to put it on the menu. And that was our next menu addition was add another dimension. One of my favorites. Really is nice. Well, folks, that covers the menu for the most part. Again, there's a lot more items, but uh, I think we do the best job of bringing the most thorough uh, menu selection to you. We need to talk a little bit about beverages. Now, although there's no official bar per se, there is complete bar service. So any drink you can name, they'll be glad to fix for you, especially being a full catering service. He does provide both wine and beer. Tell us a little bit about, about uh, your accommodations there. We do uh, offer just about any kind of mixed drink that you would like to have. Uh, we do uh, bottled wine as, as well as uh, by the glass. Uh, we do uh, you know, your red wines, your Merlot, your Cabernet, uh, Pinot Noir, as well as our whites, a nice light Pinot uh, Grigio, uh, Chablis and Chardonnay. Uh, we serve uh, bottled beer as well as draft. Um, and any one of your uh, cordials, uh, you know, whatever you'd like to have, um, as well as all your soft drinks. One of our uh, additions that we do is a nice raspberry flavored tea. I noticed that, you know, when I, I love teas and uh, especially herbal or, or, or fruit flavored. What I do for the people who know me, I don't use any uh, seasoning other than honey on, on a drink or something. So uh, on tea, if they don't have honey, which most times they don't, I will mix it to, with raspberry. And for people who don't know, with uh, raspberry juice, that's called a Boston tea. And it gives the sweetness, the fruit flavor, and it's something that's really nice. So now I know what I, I won't have to drink one of those horrible uh, soft drinks that I hate at all those restaurants. Excuse me for saying that. But uh, that's a great, great selection to have that uh, flavored tea. Now, uh, we're just about to wrap it up. I want to tell you that uh, you've been speaking and hearing to Executive Chef Bob Pierce of the Garden Room uh, Maison Creole. Uh, as we mentioned, it's on the West Bank. Uh, it's on the West Bank. Um, easy to find. If you have to get on the West Bank Expressway, just get off Manhattan, go one block toward the river, and at the first intersection, take a look on your left. You'll see a lovely, lovely Creole home under this magnificent oak tree. As we mentioned, there's a great circular drive in the front so you can let your passengers out and then go park on the side of, of the building. So it's free complimentary parking. The only problem with this restaurant is that it's not open in the evening and it's not open on the weekends. It's a lunch-only establishment. We're hoping that its success will maybe expand that. So key here, folks, is for you to help to make it as success as it should be. We've got a wonderful chef here doing his best work uh, and for the residents of the West Bank. So we really need you all to get out there and support him, with, which he does, because I know every time I've been there, he has a lovely crowd. Don't be afraid. It's not a crowd enough to make you wait an hour or something like that. You won't have to worry if you're on a busy lunch schedule. You'll have no problem getting a seat and, and great, great turnover with his wonderful wait staff. Um, as I mentioned, it's a, seats 100, so it's a big restaurant as well. So again, you're not going to have a problem seating with a beautiful view on overlooking the garden. Something really, really nice. Good service. Um, and then also his full line of catering. Do not forget that uh, Glenn Guidry, the uh, son of the owners of the Maison Creole, continues to do the catering there and they'll cater all these dishes for you real, uh, on site in a private party like we were talking about or actually at your home or function for your office. So give them a call or give them a try. 
we want you to, to patronize the garden room and also Maison Creole. Uh, it's no problem with uh, anything you'll find there and if you take it from my recommendation. If not, give me a call. Now, as you know, we're always here. Don't forget, we want you to tell um, friends and family who live in Jefferson Parish. We're hoping that this particular show will so very soon in Jefferson Parish. So those residents who can benefit the most by being either right near his restaurant or close to proximity can certainly see what we're doing. And I think uh, you'll enjoy it. So we want you, oh, we understand we got a little more time. Oh, great. Well, that's excellent. Well, as usual, we uh, are going to be here every week for you. Don't forget, we have three replays here in Orleans. You're very fortunate. You get to see us on Saturday Live. Get, we didn't get any calls today. A little disappointing. Uh, Wednesday is Wednesday morning, early in the morning for those people who, who don't have anything to do at like 3 in the morning. Uh, 3 p.m. Wednesday afternoon for those people who are lucky enough to be off. And then again, late Friday night. If you're a late night owl or a hospitality person, 3 a.m. on Saturday morning or late night, Friday night as we like to call it, you can also see this show repeated. As we mentioned, uh, I'm not sure who we have next week, but if we don't have a restaurant, you know we have a fallback. As of this year, we have a thing called Artist Review. So it's restaurant and rhythms every week, but certain weeks we also do an artist review, whereby we'll bring on a lovely artist uh, who has uh, either sculpted, painting, any of the performing arts, and he or she will uh, show many of their works. We try and bring 12 to 14 pieces that will uh, entertain you and show you the quality of work because again we have three main communities here the food community and music community that pertains to all of us and the art community that needs to pertain to all of us so uh, check them out all right uh, no still more time they keep changing wow and they only tell me this in the beginning anyway we uh, we're here to serve you for those who who don't know the show it's called restaurant review uh, we're here every Saturday, live at 3 p.m. on Channel 77. As I mentioned, look for us in Jefferson on, I know, Tuesday nights on Channel 8. We're hoping that they'll expand that and have it more than just that night. I'm not sure if they're doing. We will be bringing this show and several of all of our Jefferson Parish restaurants that we've done. We're going to bring to them and have them see it. Okay, now we're going to have to finally get in the clue that I've talked enough. Hopefully I haven't bored you. We're always uh, here to serve you. Don't forget, call us sometime. Let us know what you think of the show or any information you need for the restaurant. It helps the chef make you feel that uh, you're interested in the program. All right, come back and see us next week. Until then, we're going to go ahead and let the, the musical guests take us out, and we'll see you here again at Restaurant Review. Begin with Seagull